quilting, I was introduced to the rotary cutter and it dramatically changed my entire world. It's changed the quilting industry for almost every quilter that is out there today. Westerly Design, when they designed the ruler foot, they dramatically have changed that way quilters are quilting. Long armors have had rulers for a long time, but our domestic quilters were at a disadvantage. We've never had those amazing products that could advance our skills. I have so many people say that I can't free motion, that I don't know how to do it, that I'm no good at it. Ruler work is not free motion, it's guided motion. I already know where I'm going and all I have to focus on is just keeping the foot attached to the ruler until I'm at the end of the line. So it's really a big advancement helping people to make their quilts as beautiful as they want and really changing the level of skill that our domestic quilters are going to see. Thank you so much for joining us for one of our amazing classes the today. Today we're going to be learning something, but I'm not quite sure what. So maybe I should check out my Westerly By Me calendar where we have all of our class listings. So all you have to do is go to that date in the calendar and see what is going to be offered. You can also check the description on the class um, and be able to learn a little bit more about it and maybe even be able to take a look at the class on the university that we're going to be highlighting lighting and or some of the tools that are going to be used. So highly encourage you to take advantage of that as well. Um, but we're excited to have you here today. This is um, a class that has been pre-recorded, so you can ask lots of questions, um, put those in the chat during the class, and then we're going to answer those throughout the class and after. So make sure to ask those questions and we'll be able to answer them in the chat um, after, if not during. Um, also, again, take advantage of the opportunity to look at the description in the class, whether it's YouTube or Facebook, there's a description. You can go to that and there should be some extra links in there that might even get you a special gift or a free offer or even um, the opportunity to purchase this class and some of the tools. So we highly encourage you to take a look at those links, learn a little bit more about what's being um, provided to you today. Again, we appreciate you joining us. We'll look forward to having you ask those questions throughout. Sit back, relax, enjoy this class. Learn a little bit more about ruler work or our patchwork tools today. And we'll look forward to um, having you um, email us at info at so Steady if you have any questions. Enjoy your class today, guys. We are introducing our brand new ruler work accessory set. This is the essentials that you need for doing all of your ruler designs. With our spacing gauge, you're gonna be able to create accurate designs knowing that your foot is always a quarter inch away from every template. Sometimes you need that spacing gauge to align your design and make sure it all lines up nicely. Then we've got our echo guides. With your echo guide set, we're giving you a one inch echo, a half inch echo, and a three quarter inch echo. And now what we're showing you here is how you can create a simple design with your template. And then you can add a half inch echo to make smaller designs with an inside uh, template design, or you can echo it with the outside shape. And then our stitching line discs are giving you the opportunity to create designs on paper before you stitch them out. Save your fabric, see what you can do with your designs, make a plan, and then go to your fabric. So don't forget to sign up to win this week on our Facebook. So what I'm showing you right here is um, our Quilt As You Go class series quilt. Now this is a class series that you can find on our Society University. It is available um, on the Society University. The, value, the cost of that class is $150. But the good news is you can actually get it in two different packages that we have available here today. The first package is actually only sold through our dealers. And this is called our reseller exclusive ruler work package. So this is our ruler work kit. It is over a $400 value. Um, it actually includes eight different templates. So you get our full sampler set series of templates. You get our crosshair square, our eight and a half inch crosshair square, our 12 inch 
arc ruler. And um, then you're also going to be getting um, a whole bunch of other cool tools, including the Quilt As You Go class series quilt project. You're going to be getting this gorgeous bag with it, uh, our crosshair ruler book, which is a book that teaches you how to do a whole lot more with all of these amazing rulers. You're going to get this ruler work glider with it, um, which is going to help you and kind of keeping everything moving freely. Um, so this is a brand new kind of remade kit that we've just uh, rolled out as of April 1st. And this is the kit that we're encouraging. If you really want to get started with rulers, this has got it all. Now it's also including um, four, six different embroidery designs. So you can really kind of do some new fun things with these designs that are part of that quilt as you go quilt and really get excited about maybe doing some smaller stuff on this project or maybe combining ruler work with the embroidery designs that we're providing in it. So we're kind of upping this package a little bit, giving you a whole lot more value with it. And the retail price on that package is $175. So in addition to that option, we also have our beginner essential kit, which also has the Quilt As You Go class series quilt in it. It comes with the sampler set, a ruler foot, a 12 inch arc, and a six inch crosshair ruler. Um, and so what you're getting in that is you're getting that, that basic education. Um, you don't get some of the other goodies like the bag and the glider um, and, the, um, and the extra book but you do get all of the basic get started tools in this package. The cost of this package is $99. So a couple of great op options for you to be able to get started working with uh, rulers and both of them have this amazing quilt in it. So I would definitely encourage you to kind of take a look at which one you want to get started with. Again, if you don't have the glider, if you are excited about some of the additional education, I highly recommend uh, going with the recent seller exclusive option, but either one of them are going to help you get started. So those are kind of our two essential get started packages. Um, now with that, we also have um, set a free gift for all of you today. And that free gift is actually part of um, our package here. And I'm going to actually show you what that looks like right here, which is our ruler work guide. And this comes with our quilting essentials class bundle, which is seven different classes. We're going to be showing you portions of one of that class today, which is uh, called the Let's Get Started Ruler Quilting with Donnell McAdams. But first, what I want to do is I want to actually take you over to that ruler work guide. And we're just going to kind of browse through this guide a little bit. And I'm going to show you some of the cool things that we have in it. So the ruler work guide, uh, we've got it on full screen now, is going to give you all of the basic uh, setup information for your machine. It even gets into just the like, basic terms of what ruler work is um, and, and so on. So we're going to walk through that right now. I'll show you those six, the seven classes that you're going to get for free. And then we're going to jump over and have Donnell show us um, some of the basics with ruler work and, and how to get started with that. So as I scroll down, we're going to start with just talking about terminology. And again, just so you know, everyone here today is going to get this free uh, booklet. Um, we're going to send you a link to this so you can download it and get access to those seven bonus classes as well. Um, so in terminology, what is the term ruler work? Well, ruler work is actually described um, in a few different ways, but we also it's also referred to as quilting uh, with templates. Um, sometimes people will call uh, like to call quilting with templates guided quilting or guided free motion. Um, I like to it's when it's referred to as um, free motion quilting with training wheels. <laughs> <laughs> um, but ruler work is oftentimes um, used um, in conjunction with quilting with templates. So you're going to kind of hear in both uh, ways. What is a ruler foot? Well, a ruler foot is a half inch diameter round closed toed foot. So it's not the darning feet that are out there. You have to have a ruler foot to do ruler work or to quilt with templates. Um, again, I'm using them both simultaneously there. Um, and it's helping you create a consistent stitch design with the quilting template. 
Um, what are quilting templates and rulers? Well, those are acrylic shapes um, that are used when you're wanting to um, create a, um, a design on either a domestic machine or a long arm machine. Um, and you can use them to trace, you trace you trace along the edges of the ruler or template uh, to create beautiful quilted designs. Now, a lot of the designs that um, that we have here um, have are designs that have been created by um, Leonie West and some of our other amazing educators and designers. And they have really neat markings on them that allow you to create really consistent designs and do a variety of different designs with them. So Donnell is going to be deeper into some of these things like machine setup, um, but it's really important to know that when you're setting up a machine, um, you have the opportunity to uh, drop your machine into um, free motion mode. That's oftentimes dropping the feed dogs of the machine um, or being able to set your stitch length to zero. So those are kind of the, the three ways that you would normally be able to do that. We don't recommend putting on a, a single needle stitch plate. We recommend doing um, a, a straight stitch put a position on your machine um, just because it's, it's going to allow you to be able to get that needle center in the foot that's really important that your mish your your needle is going to be center in the foot and i'm sure donnell will share that with you today as well um machine preparation you just want to make sure it's all ready to go that it's threaded properly we talk about a little bit about the types of tools for success we recommend the 9014 top stitch needle donnell is going to dive a little deeper into needles for you here in a moment so we're going to let her do that um, we do recommend thread to get started. 30 to 50 weight cotton is really, really helpful or poly. We do often use a lot of um, poly uh, thread quite a bit. Um, we do recommend extension tables. You have to have a smooth, flat sewing surface to do ruler work. And so a lot of the other uh, extension tables out there are not um, all created equal. Some have nice bevels to them or curves. That's not ideal for ruler work. You definitely want a smooth flat sewing surface. Um, for the ruler foot, again, it's that half inch uh, closed toed foot is what we recommend. Um, all of our, we have four different feet styles that we show here. The four feet styles that we show here are basic get started feet um, are available for pretty much every machine on the market that is a domestic. We do have a gamel foot, but for the most part, your long arm companies will have a foot for you. Um, we do also have three different thicknesses of templates, um, and those three different thicknesses of templates depend on your machine. So your three, if you have a low shank machine, which we give you a little diagram up here, to tell you what type of machine you might have. Um, if it's a half inch from the needle hole position to the plate, it's um, going to be low shank. If it's a one inch distance when your, your needle bar is down from the, the uh, screw hole to the needle plate, then it's a high shank. And that's kind of a little diagram to figure it out if you're not totally sure. Um, but the three thicknesses of templates have a lot to do with where that foot position is going to be. If it's going to be a half inch away when uh, from the, the screw hole, then you're going to want a low shank knee, uh, template because sometimes that template is going to go up under that bar there, guys. And if it goes up and under that bar, if that bar comes down, it could come down on top of the template and that could cause problems. So it's really important that we give you a thinner template for those low shank machines. Uh, we do also offer high shank templates, which are 4.5 millimeter, and then long arm templates, which are six millimeter or quarter inch thick. Um, so all of those are available for all um, our designs. A lot of times people don't know that we do offer all of these in long arm thickness. Actually, most of these designs were originally created for long arms. So they've been converted down and resized to work for a lot of the domestic machines. But we have both sizes and available for long arm as well.
accessories. We're going to show you how the crosshair square works in a minute, but it's a amazing get, uh, marking tool for your blocks. You're going to love it. Stable tape is another awesome, awesome thing um, that you're going to learn uh, why it's so invaluable. We include stable tape with all of our rulers, so you don't have to buy separate tape initially unless you know you're going to want a lot. Um, our spacing gauge is another essential tool you're going to learn how to use today and why it's so important. Donnell does a great job sharing that with you. We have our grid glider or our ruler work glider. I mentioned earlier that our ruler work glider does come with your if you choose to get that ruler work kit that we only sell in the stores um, but you can purchase them separately so we are grid glider is a great tool if you're wanting to use it for multiple sewing purposes because it comes with the cutout so your feed dogs can be up um, it has the grid on it. It has markings for seam allowance. It's got angle markings on it. It is just an amazing all-purpose glider surface. The ruler work glider has a circular cutout, so it covers the feed dogs, so there's nothing that's going to keep that template and fabric from moving around the needle, and that's why we recommend it for doing free motion and ruler work, because it's got a circular hole, covers up the feed dogs, but because it's for free motion, we don't have all these other markings. It's just for free motion. So it's just a flat green surface. Um, so we're gonna give some of these things away today, just so you know, um, but I wanted to make sure you knew about, um, you know, kind of the difference between the gliders. Um, our stitching line discs, if you want to draw out your designs before, because fabric is expensive, and you don't necessarily want to practice on your final project, that you're wanting to finish. Um, we definitely recommend our stitching line discs. They allow you to draw out the designs. We actually have this really cool design sketch pad that um, we might have one to give away today as well for one of you um, that allow you to kind of have a grid markings on, on there so you can really draw out designs with it and get creative um, and then take that to your project. That's what we encourage. So we have some really great getting started tips on how to get your machine ready. We've got um, tips for setting up uh, different uh, you know types of things on your machine from the stitch plates to the stitch length and so on. Um, just so you know, and again, Donnell is gonna share this with you, you are in charge of your stitch length unless you have a stitch regulator built into your machine. Most machines don't have it. I know that Bernina um, has had a stitch regulator option for a long time. We do have some special ways that you can adapt your stitch regulators for ruler, ruler work now on the Bernina stitch regulator. Um, we call it our stitch regulator table. Um, also, Janome just came out with a brand new machine that offers a stitch regulator. So there are some machines that are coming out with it, but most of us are not that lucky. And so you are responsible to regulate your stitches. You're gonna get more comfortable with it as time progresses. Donnell's gonna show you some tips on how to do that effectively. Um, tips continued. So stable tape placement. It's really important that you place it, you uh, cut those the stable tape into half inch pieces. And I like to put it where the stable tape, where my fingers are going to be. So Donnell will kind of show you where she likes to put it too, but it's important that you grip that, put that gripper tape on those templates where you're gonna be pressing down, because that's really where it's going to be gripping the fab is where you apply pressure. Again, we talked a little bit about needles. We talked a little bit about thread. Um, you can use any thread you want to, but you are going to obviously need to change out your needles to accommodate that thread. To get started, we recommend that 9014 top stitch needle um, with that 50 weight cotton or poly thread um, is really, really helpful. We have a really cool Y Westerly video. Um, I'm not gonna share that with you today, or actually, let's see, could I share that with you today? I think I could share that with you today, everyone. Why Westerly? I think it's, this is a really great message from uh, Kate Quinn that I love to share with everyone. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that video with you now, and then we'll head over to, um, over to Donnell after a couple more little uh, things that I'm gonna show you. Pretty 
pretty soon after I started quilting, I was introduced to the rotary cutter and it dramatically changed my entire world. It's changed the quilting industry for almost every quilter that is out there today. Westerly Design, when they designed the ruler foot, they dramatically have changed that way quilters are quilting. Long armors have had rulers for a long time, but our domestic quilters were at a disadvantage. We never had those amazing products that could advance our skills. I have so many people say that I can't free motion, that I don't know how to do it, that I'm no good at it. Ruler work is not free motion, it's guided motion. I already know where I'm going and all I have to focus on is just keeping the foot attached to the ruler until I'm at the end of the line. So it's really a big advancement helping people to make their quilts as beautiful as they want and really changing the level of skill that our domestic quilters are going to see. All right. So I told you that we were just going to watch that. I just absolutely love the way that Kate describes ruler work and kind of gives you a little feel of why we are so excited about uh, ruler work here at So Steady and Westerly. Um, it's just we see the opportunity to be able to finish your own quilt at home, to be able to create amazing projects with rulers. And we just, you know, love to be able to share that with all of our community. Um, we have some amazing educators, What she didn't share with you is we actually have over 20 different educators worldwide that are creating awesome projects for you every day. Um, those 20 different educators have now created 300 different classes on our So Study University guys. Those 300 different classes are, um, we've got 30 plus of them that are free, um, but they cover a gamut of different diff quilting designs that we have in our line. And the line is vast. We actually have probably nearly a thousand different ruler designs available in various sizes. So when you talk about the ability to really create what you want, you've got that right there in the Westerly line. So not only the rulers are available to you, but then you also have the amazing education to back it up. So we do definitely um, believe in education and know that you need that to be successful with our products. Um, so as we get back to our guide that again, I'm going to give you a link to so you can download this at home. Our machine setup guide top. Um, we talk a little bit about some of the things that you could be experiencing if you have the um, top thread that's too tight or bobbin thread that's too tight. We give you some different tips for that. Why would you want to adjust tension? That can be something that's really important on some machines. Most machines have auto tension adjusting on them, some of the newer ones. So you don't necessarily need to focus on that to begin with, but it's something that you want to be aware of. Um, what should my stitch look like? Talk, talk a little bit about that. Um, and if top thread is too tight, then um, what you might be able to do. So those are, again, just some tips that are right there in this ruler work guide for all of you. These are some of a little bit more detail on, on some of the essentials, like um, the extension tables and why that's so important. Here at So Steady, we believe in extension tables because we make them. Um, no, we find that they're very, very, very helpful for pretty much any sewing project, unless you're maybe making um, a cuff on a, a garment. <laughs> um, you're going to appreciate having that smooth, flat sewing surface. And um, some of our favorites, like our wish table with that big blue drawer, um, are going to give you just some extra really cool abilities to do um, more things with your machine and with your projects. And so, um, and again, ruler work, you absolutely need a flat sewing surface. So why wouldn't you want any so steady table for that? Basting, uh, there are lots of different ways to base your quilt. We absolutely still recommend basting. Um, whatever way you choose, you should, um, they should, the basting should always be no more than four inches apart when you're doing it, but you can do pen spray basting. Um, you can do long basting stitches. There's all kinds of options. Okay, so earlier I mentioned that we have 30 plus different free classes on our So Study University. Well, what we've done is we've taken seven of those classes and we've given them to you on this um, awesome guide. Actually, one of those classes is not free. It's called Ruler Work 101, but we're giving those to you um, in our uh, free bundle here. Um, and so this is something that you can actually take advantage of. Um, and I'm going to send you a 
link to this as well. We've got a little coupon code for you to access this class right there on the SoSteady University and be able to have it for life. Um, and so these are the seven classes that are all tied to the sampler set to that, those two beginner class bundles that I shared with you earlier. So whether you want to get the ruler work kit or you want to get that quilting uh, beginner essentials kit, either one of those are going to give you um, even more education. But these are some really great classes on the university to get started. I recommend uh, definitely the parabolic curves class by Helen Sullivan. Um, the let's get started class um, we're going to be actually diving into today with Donnell McAdams. So we're going to be watching a large portion of that. Um, and then, of course, there's some other really fun classes like a cushion cover, cover class by Sharon Wyatt. Um, we've got the Straight Lines Library by uh, Leone. So just learning all kinds of things you can do with your with your straight rulers um, and so on. So check that out. Again, I'll be posting a link for that for everyone to be able to enjoy. And um, there was a question that looks like that came in. It said, I have a new Juki. Um, so which foot would I need? I will go ahead and, and message you separately, Beth, um, and talk to you a little bit about that machine because there might be a special uh, foot that we need to get you. So let's head on over to Donnell now and we'll jump in to the um, the class that we have on our So City University that's part of this Quilting Essentials bundle called Let's Get Started. Um, I've actually kind of sped up through the portion where we talk a lot about the extension table because we're just going to dive right into ruler work today, guys. Um, someone asked, do I have lifetime access to the classes? Yes. Our So Steady University will give you lifetime access to all of our education that we have on those um, on the university. So um, you'll be able to download um, all of the, the resources that we provide you and then you'll have access to the classes on the university for life. So let's go ahead and jump in with Donnell McAdams and our Let's Get Started. So good questions. You guys are good. All right. We're ready to ta start talking about ruler work. Now, there are a few more things that I need to mention before we actually dive right in there to the templates. And that has to do with needles and thread. And so we want to discuss just a little bit about that so that you won't make some of the mistakes that, like I said, I have made in the past. Now, one of the things I'm finding interesting as I'm watching some of the comments, so You've heard it here first. I think when you're doing your quilting, especially as a beginner, you're going to want to use the um, 90 top stitch needle. Okay, you're going to want to use that 90 top stitch needle because I recommend that when you first get started, you use what I would call all purpose weight thread and use polyester okay now some people say well i was taught that i can't put polyester thread in cotton and, and quilting fabric is cotton mm, that's kind of like an old wives tale because realistically your fabric doesn't go oh that feels funny here so you want to make sure the polyester for beginners is much better because it's not going to um break as easily. And when you first get started, you're a little more jerky than you intend to be. And that's just something that's going to make it easier. So 40 weight or 50 weight is what we would call all purpose. Now, some of you out there are probably have sewn in 50, 60 years like I have. And you're just like, well, you know, when I started, all we had was really all purpose. And, you know, then we had maybe buttonhole thread and heavy duty thread and then probably quilting thread. Now there are so many threads. It's like unbelievable all the different threads you can use. So when you start, you can use a quilting thread. The one I have is a signature thread and it's a variegated and it's 40 weight. As you get going, you might become the world's best teensy tiny quilter. In other words, you're going to love to use our mini templates and you're going to probably want a little finer thread. You can find the finer threads and you can go down in the size of your needle. 
but don't start with that. You want to start with just a 40 or 50 weight thread. Now, interestingly enough, the bigger the numbers get in thread, such as an 80 weight, which there are a lot of quilters that quilt with 80 weight, that thread is smaller and the needle needs to be smaller, such as a 65, a 70, a 75, because you have a finer thread. So unfortunately, the numbering in threads is opposite the number of needles. So on needles, as the number gets bigger, the hole gets bigger. That makes sense to me. But in thread, as the number gets bigger, it gets finer. So just remember those two things. Now, I was talking about a 90 top stitch needle, and I just happen to have a super giant needle here so I can show you these things. You probably are aware that needles have a groove in the front, and that's for the thread to ride down. And that's why it's so ever important to have the right size needle with your thread, because that thread has to fit in this groove but not have a groove that's so big it doesn't hug either side. You want to make it so it's fitting right in there, nice and um, uh, it's, it's kind of like a channel that hugs the thread. It's not going to actually touch it, but it's going to get closer than if you had a larger channel. Now, this is what we call the eye, the point. We know that, but I want you to see the difference in needles here. When you go down through here, you're going to want to use that top stitch needle because of that extra space. You can see it in all of these needles. Okay, the universal will be just fine. That's what I also use for embroidery. And um, the embroidery needle is this right here is also fine. They're very similar. But when we're using our um, templates, we want to use the top stitch needle. Now on the back, you'll notice this is what's called a scarf. That's where your hook comes around and takes the thread that's coming down from the needle and goes around to the bottom and makes a stitch. So that scarf right there is different sizes too. And if you don't have a compatible thread on the bottom, you're going to have some issues. So I recommend that you use either the same thread or one that's compatible in size so everything happens to go together right here on the back. So if you just thought, y'all yeah, just put in a needle and start, I would recommend that you'd wait until you have a top stitch needle. Now I'm sewing today on a Janome. And Janome has what's equivalent to the top stitch needle size and everything, but it's what's called the purple needle. And sometimes it's more of a magenta in color. But if you ever hear anybody say, I use a purple tip needle, it's not like the tip is purple, but the top is. Now, last but not least, when you change your needle, make sure you open the screw, but don't take it out, but open the screw enough to get the needle up high enough into that opening where it's supposed to go. Because if you don't, and it's down a little bit, let's say you were sewing with a 75 and then you went to this, you're not going to have a stitch that forms. You're gonna have breaking, you're gonna have skipping, you're gonna have all different kinds of things because this is not up there high enough. As a needle gets larger in size, this gets larger. This is the shank and that gets larger also. So that's about needles. Now, when you have your thread, your needles and all of that ready to go, we are then ready for talking about the foot. Now the foot, we've come a long way, let's just say in probably about eight years, because when we started, these were the four feet that were available. None of the machine companies had their own foot. Well, now several of the companies have their own foot. And here's the difference. I'm going to show you. These are our feet, Wesley's feet. There's one right there. This happens to be a high shank. You can see it looks like that, only smaller. 
And then this is one from the company for my high shank machine. And you'll notice that there's not that long space. That's because when this foot was made, the manufacturer of the foot knew it was going on this particular machine. It was made specific for this machine. So no up and down adjustment would be needed. On this one, there might be 2,000 or 3,000 different brands of machines that use this same foot because we have all of the options of where we tighten it onto the shank. And I'm gonna show you how easy that can be because this is kind of the scary part. If you don't get it right, you're not gonna have success and I want you to get out there sewing. So these, this is low shank, medium shank. This is the only thing that's medium in our whole line. There are no templates. There's nothing else that's medium. This fits some of those machines that have kind of a, what they call a mezzanine position and they need more space than this and not enough space here. So a lot of the FOFs for sure take this particular foot. All of the feet are the same in this right here. This one and this one are both high shank, but this is called high shank special. And the reason it's called high shank special is because although this is correct, this side of this little arm needed to be longer than this one so that the needle can come right straight down the middle on all of these feet. So if your machine needs a high shank, do not purchase a high shank special. Okay. Now, regarding our templates, let's talk about that right now. This is a low shank template. The medium foot takes low shank templates. The high shank takes high shank or low shank. You can use both. Therefore, if you had two machines, one's high, one's low, buy low shank templates. If you only have one, you're gonna still wanna get high shank templates, but you can use low on the high shank. And this one is the same way as this. It's high shank, but it could use a low. Now, many of you may have a Bernina machine that takes what is called the 72 foot. That 72 foot will use all three heights because it has a way to adjust but it would be kind of crazy to buy the long arm templates if you don't have a long arm or a sit down machine because they're heavier, they're bulky and you don't need those. But if you had a long arm or a sit down quilter and you had the Bernina, you could buy long arm templates and use it on both of your machines. So I wanna tell you that from the beginning you're gonna be able to access this information for a long, long time. And I wanna make it so that you understand that you don't have to go out and buy two sets of this and two sets of that. Because guess what? When I first started, that's what I did. And I've got a lot of templates that I'll never use now because of the fact that I really don't need more than one set. So that's why I'm telling you that. Now, I'm gonna take this screw out because I have to. I'm gonna put it through this opening and I'm gonna put it back in place. Now, if that screw doesn't go through there and, and latch on easily, look, I, I've already dropped it. Don't force it because the last thing you want to have is a $300 repair because you forced a screw and stripped that needle bar. Now, when I get this on here, I'm just going to tighten it finger tight. And then I'm going to see that's staying right there. And then I'm going to back it off so it will still go up and down. Now, I was doing a decorative stitch when I finished. So I need to move my needle because it needs to be dead set in the center. So I'm gonna do what I call go back to home where it's gonna be in the middle and set, there we go, it moved over. 
And then that way I've got it set. So when I get it exactly where I want it, my needle is going to be in the center. So you can see it still goes up and down. Now, when I set my machine for ruler work, and guess what? Ruler work is way different than free motion. So there's a difference on your machines. If you have a free motion setting, but not a ruler work setting, just set your machine for straight stitch and lower your feed teeth. You'll have much better results. And those of you that might have the Vikings, they have a beautiful feature of sensing the height of your fabric, no matter where it's at. But that's not good for what we're doing. And so you would want to make sure you turn off that auto sensor. And unless you have a brilliance or an epic, any of the three epics or whatever number there are brilliances, those have ruler work settings. But you're gonna want to use um, if you have the diamonds, the uh, um, uh, rubies, the, all, the, all the gem machines, you're going to want to just set it for straight stitch, lower your feed teeth manually, and that you probably have a setting for it. And then you will be able to turn off that auto sensor foot so it's not sensing that, and you will have no problem at all. If you have trouble with that, shoot me an email, contact So Study, and ask them for my email. It's on there for the educators so you can find it and I'll help you get that straightened around. And Donna, yeah. we did have a couple questions yes. um, and they go back a little bit. Um, one is how often do you suggest changing your needle? The best thing I can tell you is you will know on that too. They say every nine to ten hours of actual sewing, but I can tell you People who are measuring that are probably making a garment and they are not doing as much sewing as a person using a, um, a machine doing ruler work because you are sewing a lot. When you start to hear a picking or you see needle break or uh, excuse me, thread breakage, you probably need to change that needle. Now, it's funny because the other day in a class I mentioned I have a timeout for my needles and so these are my timeout positions and they all have different colors at the top. And the reason I say that is if I was using a different thread and I had that problem and I pulled my needle out, it may not be that it's a bad needle at this point, but I'll tell you what, I'm gonna talk about it in a minute. When you have shredding a thread, that means that this, I might as well go ahead and talk about it now. That means that this eye is bad and this is where all of the action is most people think it's here in the point but it's actually right here because as this thread comes down and turns to go through that hole this is rounded right now so at the top it's not only rounded this way it's rounded this way but after this goes through here that thread at the speed that it's going, even though it's super, super fine, will start to take some of the smoothness out of this edge and it will get more to the point where it's got a sharper edge and it will actually shred that thread. So if you've ever seen that little willy worm coming up the needle at you, that's what's happening. There's probably still a piece still going through here you can give me some love if that's happened to you. But this right here, if that's happened, you're going to find that this goes right through there and has a little sliver of thread, but the rest of it's bunching up and coming up here. That means this needle is shot. It's done. It doesn't get to go to timeout. It gets to go away. And I just keep a little extra pill bottle and I just keep those needles in there when I get enough of them. I make sure I put them into like a sharps jar or something like that um, so that they're not just put in the trash. So that will definitely make it so that you have a good needle going all the time. Um, a lot of people will say that they, you know, use a, net, a new needle for each quilt project. Um, that's probably a good plan too. And since we're talking about this, let's just interject right now. 
going forward, when you are piecing your quilt, in other words, you're putting the pieces together, you are going to want to use 60 weight thread. And I use a 60 weight thread, I guess I don't have, there it is, a 60 weight thread by Alex Anderson that's called Quilters Select. And this thread is super. I use it in the bobbin and the top. And the reason I do that is because a lighter weight thread will make for nice flat seams. I don't even pay attention to a scant quarter anymore because of using that 60 weight thread. It will make it so that when you're ready to do your, your quilting, you will be able to go right over all those seams and move on and you won't have to stop and raise your foot and change the height and all of that kind of thing. So from now on going forward, you can use this 60 weight thread. Now you might say, well, good grief. I've got all these 300 colors of thread right now and none of them are 60 weight. Well, just remember in piecing, you really only need like a cream, a white, maybe a gray. You don't need a bunch of different colors when you're piecing. So that will make a difference. Use a smaller needle. I usually use a 75 or an 80 for that. So um, you're going to, you know, make sure you keep, that's why there's different colors over here. Make sure you keep track of what needles are what size and all of that going forward, but it will make a huge difference. So back to this. Okay, this is going up and down. I need to put my glider on. So this is important. I had a lady the once, she was buying like $300 worth of templates and tools and all that, but she wasn't going to get this. And I said, you might as well give me those products back because you're not going to have success. I've lined this up with my needle this way and going across this way. And I pretty much sew all the time because as you can see, I, my feed teeth can be exposed, okay? Your feed teeth can be exposed and that way you're going to be able to sew, do regular sewing, whatever. And so this just makes all of this area, even though our tables are all custom cut, and I should say too, that when you order a table, all you got to do is tell them the make and model of your table. And the same thing with your machine to get your foot. You just need to tell uh, so Steady the make and the uh, model of your machine and they'll be able to get your foot. So now that we've got all of that set up, let's get right to the fun. So I have got a quilt sandwich here. I've got batting, I've got backing, and I've got a topper. Now, I use black mainly because it shows up better for you, but this is where you can use some of that fabric that, you know, it's like, why did I buy it? Whatever. But I would encourage you to invest in some that is solid so that you can see it, especially as you're beginning. Now, what I'm going to do is come to this corner over here. And I am going to just put my fabric underneath there, and I'm gonna set my foot down. Now remember, this has not been tightened on there. So when I set it down, it's going to adjust to the height that it comes to. So I'm just gonna put my foot down, make sure this is resting on my fabric. I'm gonna take that screwdriver, and I recommend you get a longer one so that you can get in there and tighten it without disturbing your foot height. And I'm not putting it super tight yet because I'm not sure. And I'm gonna make sure that this goes underneath there. I'm gonna take the thread and put the needle down, bring the foot up and bring the thread up. And I bring the thread up by just what I call flossing. So I go underneath there, there's my bobbin thread, same weight, different color, doesn't matter. And now I'm going to put my foot back down and my needle back down. Now, I haven't told you, but I'm not a free motioner. Never was. When they handed me the templates to play with, the first words on the template package were free motion. I threw them in a drawer. 
Six months later, I'm challenged to get those things back out. And I had to do it because I had to learn it. But I'm not a free motioner. But you got to do a little free motion here just to test it out. So you're just kind of going to go around in a circle. Do something. You don't have to worry about the rules of free motion. Now, did you hear that? I think you probably did. That means my foot is not low enough. It's not, it needs to go lower. So I'm going to go to the settings on my machine. You may not have these settings. Well, actually, I don't need to go to the settings yet. I need to loosen the foot and push it down farther. So if you have skip stitches, shredded thread, or nasty noise like you just heard, your foot needs to go lower. Your mind tells you that would be totally opposite, but that's what you need to do. So let's see if I can do it. Oh, that sounds really bad. Okay. Now I'm not just making a stage show of this. I'm showing you what you're going to encounter because this is the part that once you get it solved, you're not going to have any issues. So let me go ahead, thread this again. Mine has an automatic threader, makes it nice. And you've got to put this through here. Now, some of the feet have slots in it that will make it easier. Pull that thread back up, do the same thing again. And let's see what happens this time. After you've done that and it looks pretty good and it's not giving me any nasty sounds or whatever, then you're simply going to take the first template that we're going to use and we are going to just try a straight line. Now, this is kind of like the very first time you're saying, what? It won't matter. You're just going to lay it beside there. Oh, you heard it again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to raise this. I'm glad this is happening because I want you to be able to solve your issues if you have them. So make sure you've threaded it correctly. And quite honestly, I think that was missing a place. Got a little bit of lint there. That's another thing. Make sure you're cleaning your machine on a regular basis because you're going to have a lot more lint just because of the fact that you're sewing a high speed all the time. So let's just see here before I change anything. I think that just had missed a threading guide. And so once you've got this going like that, the last one you're going to check is stitching from lower right to upper left at a diagonal like this. And this is even what the long armors do because that is the toughest direction to stitch. And you can see right there, I had that again. Now I'm going to tell you, this is a brand new needle before today started this, but I'm going to get another needle out, a brand new one, and put it in because I don't want to waste a lot of time trying to figure out what this could be. And the first action is to get out a new needle. So make sure you have, it wasn't shredding but you did hear it breaking there. So that's why I did that. Get your questions ready. Sarah can interrupt me at any time. And we did have some questions. Okay. Um, let's see. Now, and you already addressed, I think uh, we had a question regarding how to set your foot on the presser bar shaft. And I believe yeah. that was addressed. And Cheryl, if you still have questions, let us know. Um, let's see, what do you do if the thread broke every time you sew from down and up to left? 
Yep. And that's what I'm addressing right here. Perfect. Yep. Um, and then we had one from a little bit of while ago. It was regarding the Circle Straits tool. It says, do you recommend placing it directly on the bed of the machine or must you use the glider mat under it at all times? You could put it right on the bed. I think the glider mat always helps, but that's just because it allows your fabric to go under there so smoothly. So yeah, you could, you could, um, you could, you can use it that way. I'm not sure how well it's going to, I've never used it on my machine directly, so I'm not sure how it's going to, you know, respond to getting it off and whatever. So. Right. It is a very, the universal circle straight tool is nice and sticky. So yes, we do it typically is. recommend using the mat just you know, nice and smooth, easier to reposition. Okay, so while we were kind of answering questions and talking, I don't know, most of you probably were kind of paying attention. I actually took the foot and loosened it and put it back down and then tightened it. So now when I stitch that, this is the direction somebody was asking about. And if it not, it was to the left. But you can see that's working fine now. It just needed to go lower. So I completely loosened it, pushed it down, and tightened it up. And we have, you know, solved, it appears, the problem. Okay. So I'm going to cut that. And because this machine has its own foot, I'm going to take this off. You have to take it completely out and we will put this foot on and actually taking this one on and off. I don't have to take it completely out, but just remember, don't force that screw in there. Or you will have an expensive repair. And when you're putting this through, sometimes it doesn't want to go. It, it's grabbing on the bottom. Just do that and get a hold of this. I will tell you, you're going to start seeing me use this throughout, but this is the best type of tweezer. It looks like a little hockey puck, or not a hockey puck, hockey stick. And so that is one of the best to use. Now, we are going to go ahead and take what is, again, a great tool. So Steady has this. This is called a Clover Choco Pen. And the reason we like it is a little bit later, I'm going to be using a tool that I will need to get it down into the grooves. Right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line beside it. And I'm going to draw a crust at a 90 degree like this. Now, you may have other types of Chaco markers, but they're not going to have this dolphin tip. If you have this particular one, and it doesn't fit in there, just get an acrylic nail file and file a little bit of this off on either side. Now this chalk is okay, but it's not the best you can use. I have emptied mine and I have refilled it with what is called iron off chalk. It's by Pounce and you wanna make sure it says iron off. And I'm gonna give you a quick little information here. This is a public service announcement. Never open the inside bag. Okay. The inside bag has a zipper down here. And if you open it, you will never ever get it closed again. Promise me. Or yeah, I know. All right. So this is what I do. I take it to the bottom corner and I, this one is brand new still. But I take it to the bottom corner and I just cut off a small little tip big enough to get a straw through. Now let's see if I still have my straw right here. I don't see it, but I'm, there it is. I'm talking McDonald's straw. And I cut it down to about four inches. I stick it in that opening and push it down and it'll fill up to about there. So you're just gonna put your finger on the top. This piece will come off. You empty out what's in there and then you refill it with this iron off chalk. 
And a little bit later with one of the designs, I will iron, or yeah, I will iron it off for you. So don't use the chalk that's in there unless you want to brush and brush and brush and still have trouble getting it off. The iron off only comes in white. If you want to have it so it will show up on lighter colors, you're going to take tea, two teaspoons of this chalk, the iron off chalk, and mix it with one teaspoon of cinnamon. Mix that up, get another color one of these, and actually empty out what's in it and put that one that has cinnamon in it. So that then when you mark it, you can see what you're doing. You can brush off what you, um, you know, the cinnamon, just brush it off. I actually use, and I can't believe I don't see it right here. I use a, like a bathroom brush from the dollar store. And I just brush that off. A toothbrush will work. It just takes longer. And then you can press off this chalk. So that's a little bit about that. And I forgot to put my clip back in there because what I do after I've done that corner, remember this is a new one. I just, it's going to have just a little cut in it and I just shake all the chalk out of it and turn this back and close it. And the reason I go through this is because the first time I did it, I looked like Frosty the Snowman when I got done. And I don't know if you've ever been a gymnast. I've not, but I got my experience of why they use chalk. It just kind of makes your hands cling to anything. So let's show you how we would follow this line. If you can see, I think you can, right down in the center there, I am straddling this foot. This foot is a one half inch ruler work foot. So I've got a quarter inch from my needle to the edge on either side and front and back. So when I stick that in there so that I can see it right like that, I'm going to go ahead and put my needle down, bring my needle up, floss underneath there so I can get a hold of my thread. And I have now made sure that it's right on that line. Remember, I don't free motion or I'd be able to follow that. So now since I said it's a quarter of an inch from the needle all the way around, no matter where I put this, it's a quarter of an inch away from the needle. Another tool that you're going to want to have, and this is the best way to hang on to it. I usually, when I'm doing this, I put this around my neck. It's called a notions necklace. This comes off so that I can use it. And this is my spacing gauge. We've got an eighth, a half, a half, a quarter, and then a whole inch. And so again, I'll put that around my neck. I left it off so y'all could see what we got. And so now I'm just going to come down my line and put the edge of that and pull that in and in the exact quarter of an inch. So let's just go stitching. I'm pushing the fabric away from me. When I get to that bottom line, I'm going to take this tool. This is my 12 inch arc and I'm going to put it right there to measure again. And I'm going to stitch right across there. Now I want to get back right to that spot where I began. So I'm going to set this side here against that spot because that's where I want my needle. And when I turn this up against there, I've now allowed from the spot I want my needle in to the edge of my ruler, the exact space that the needle is from the edge of the foot. Now I can't just do it any old way. It has to be so that this side, which is the flat side, is right against my ruler. So I'm just gonna take this and go like that. And now we're gonna stitch right back to that spot. Now with this, I know this is a lot of information and that's why we leave this up so you can see it. I'm going to get, oh, that fell off. 
I'm going to get my needle that's self-threading. And So Steady has those on there. You can see here that there's a little hook in it to allow me to get that thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the needle up, the foot up, and I'm gonna pull this back. And then I'm gonna get a hold of this and bring that back, put the foot down and put the needle exactly back in that spot and bring the thread up once more. So now when I bring my foot up, I am bringing up that bobbin thread. And that's the reason I kept two colors so you can see what's going on. And then the one that's still moving, this one, I'm just going to come close down here and cut it. I'm going to cut the one from my needle. And now what I have here are four threads. The, one I, the two I started with and the two I ended with. And then all I'm going to do is take these two fingers and turn that around and put this tail up against and pull it through the loop. I'm going to take the point, go through the loop, and touch right back down to the spot that I had my needle in. And now I'm going to pull that down and I'm going to stop and pull the needle out about a quarter of an inch away. And you're thinking, why on earth would she do something like that? Because I wanna pull that knot through. So I'm coming and getting this threaded. And sometimes a couple threads will come and you'll have to do, well, there we go. I've got two and two, there they're all in there. And so I want that knot to not be on top of my fabric. I want to bury it down in. So you're going to go through there, make sure you don't come out the back side. And I'm going to pull that thread. And I'm doing this slowly because I want to make sure you see what happens with that knot. So I'm pulling the tails through. I still got that ugly knot right there until I give it a tug. And now it went in there. And the knot is not right here. It's actually about right there. So it gives you a clean look. I keep pulling on it because that's what I normally do. And then I pull it up so it's a little bit puckered there so that when I cut those threads, they go right back into my fabric. So now when you look at that, it's not like everyone is looking at that going, oh, she started right there because the knot's there. It's now a nice, neat space. Now, if I want to echo on the inside here, I'm gonna come down to the middle, put that foot down, put it right against the line. And now I'm gonna put my needle down, my needle up and pull up that bobbin thread, put it back down and put the needle in. And I'm gonna use the edge of my template right on top here. Now, one of the questions that probably someone is asking about is how do I keep these stitches even? Well, when you start, don't worry about it, okay? That's the truth, don't worry about it. Learn to use your templates and the stitch length will come. Now, I'm gonna give you a big hint. I like to set my machine on medium speed turn my foot pedal on the floor around so that the back is closest to me. And then I simply use my toes and floor it. Because when you're flooring it, you're going to be able to forget about how much pressure you put on your foot control because it's not gonna go any faster than medium speed. So now when I start, I will get used to how I need to move this over time, but I need to learn how to guide my templates to begin with. Now, what are you striving for? You really want it to look pretty much like what like a 2.2 would look. A 2.4 or 5 is a normal stitch length. A 2.2 is just a little bit shorter. And so you're going to just 
practice getting used to moving your template. And what I'm doing here is I'm stopping when my edge of my foot hits that line. I stopped over here when the front hit that line. And now I'm going to line it up on that line that's before. And I'm going to stop when this side hits that line. I'm going to come back in here and line it up and come right back to where I began. Now I would do the same thing and I'm going to do just the first part again so that you can see it. Needle up, foot up, pull away, come back, needle back down. And then when you do this, you're going to, oh, I already did that, didn't I? Here we go. No, that's what I got to do. And now I'm going to pull up. And the one that I cut is the one that is still moving. This one here is the one still moving. Cut that, cut your needle thread. And now this is where you can go ahead and you can see right there, it lined up it perfect. I just got to take these threads, might as well just do it. Flip that around, hold that in place. I have a little magnet up on my light bar that I keep my needle so that I can get to it very easily. Pull that down, let go, so it's about a quarter of an inch away. Go right back into that same spot. You don't have to go straight, you can go at a curve, or not a curve, but an angle. Can't tell you how many times I've gone out in public with my notions necklace, but I guess I can always take it off. But see how that just popped right in there? And now you can't even tell where that stops or it starts. It just makes it so easy. I didn't pull that enough. I'll just have to take my finger and put that through there. So that's the basics of working with templates. Okay. So this was our uh, 12 inch arc. I may use it again today, I may not, but you can tell it's got a lot of lines on there. It's your basic tool, everybody needs one. Now, another tool that you're gonna get, and Sarah had shown you some of that at the beginning, I would strongly encourage you to just go ahead and buy what's called the Ruler Work Kit. Because the Ruler Work Kit has got everything you need to get started and you don't have to keep looking for it. Oh, I forgot to get this, or I forgot to get that. It's gonna have your spacing gauge, your templates that we're gonna show you in just a minute. And this piece right here, this is what's called the crosshair grid, crosshair ruler, same name, whatever. And you'll notice this one is what we call the eight point. So I can mark eight lines, 16 lines or 32 lines with this because there are extra spots and you're going 32 lines. Well, believe it or not, as you get going with this, you will need those. See how that just fits right down inside these grooves? Makes it so easy, only go once, you don't need it twice. And then you're just gonna come here and you're gonna cross right like that. Okay, so now, oh, I did miss one. If I needed 16, I would just rotate this so it was lined up that way, and then I get one in between each of those spaces. And you can just keep going and going till you get to 32. All right, so now we're going to use a design that actually needs a thumbtack to pin this, to use the, the template on. And your templates will come with thumbtacks, okay? If you lose them, you'll get more the next time or just go buy a flathead thumbtack. I need that thumbtack to come with a point up from the bottom. If I just go through here and fish around, I'm not gonna get that. So what I can do is I can just put it through from the top pull it out, go to the back, and push it back up, okay? I don't much like those holes. So I'm gonna take a piece of what's called um, RNK Embroidery Perfection Tape. 
And I'm going to just put that right through there and I'm going to put it on like that. And that way I don't have to put a hole in my fabric. Now, most places that sell embroidery products will sell this because this tape, although it's good and strong, is much better than anything like um, frog tape or painter's tape or washi tape or, oh no, not masking tape, don't use it. But this is called embroidery perfection tape because it was used for, is used for in the hoop embroidery designs where like you have to add a zipper or a trim or something like that. So now that I've got that position, I'm going to get what's called my spinning wheels 36 template. And we had a good question come through Donnell. Um, is it better to use gloves with the templates or not? I'm not a glove person. I don't need a glove. I don't necessarily, um, if, if you view, are used to using gloves, that would be fine. But to me, uh, the gloves just get in my way. So it's totally up to you. So this is our 36 spinning wheel template. Let's just take a little exploration around this template. We've got the hole that it's gonna go with the thumbtack. We got an A and we've got a B. We've got a straight line. We've got two diagonal lines. We've got some other lines, but today all we're gonna be using is the straight line and the hole to line up. Now you'll see I'm using right here what's called a ruler sticker. And again, these are products that you can get right from Sew Steady. Ruler stickers come in a package of three different colors. And I will tell you, if you're template quilting, you're gonna want ruler stickers because they're repositionable. Like I could take this one off. I just happen to leave it on there because this is the marking for a border that I do. So I'm not paying attention to it now, but later if I have time, I'll show you that border. So I'm putting that thumbtack on the, or putting that on the thumbtack, I'm lining up up here. Now, as you can see, we now have spirograph for quilters. I'm gonna lay this at the top. I'm gonna pretend the first time here, if I told you to, to draw with a pencil or an ink pen, you would come in here and you just draw around and I say, stop at B, don't stitch between A and B. And that would be all fine. But now you've got a foot and for some reason it's kind of scary and you end up out here in the middle. Just keep in mind, stay against the template, push against the template. So when we get here, that's B, I'm gonna use my other finger so you can see better. We just simply rotate the template over to line up with the next line. And look what happened. We're now at A again. We stitch, we rotate. So you obviously want to tell your machine, if it doesn't already do it, to stop in the down position because that's gonna save you a bunch of time. Now, if your machine does not automatically stop in the down position, only rotate your hand wheel towards you. Never turn it back, okay? Don't ever turn it back. And uh, we had a question, Donnell. Someone asked, are there non-slip grips on the back side of templates? Yes, and I will show you one of the others since I've already got it in here. This is what's called stable tape right here. And that stable tape should go like, in this case, it's gonna go on the back side. And the back side is the side that the words are backwards and you can feel the etching, okay? Now I've used, you can see this little puzzle piece. That's so if I just stitch through this, I've got one on there too. If I stitch around this and I wanna stop but not break my thread, I can take that puzzle piece out and I can then move through that gate and go to another piece and simply put this back. So there's a lot of lines on here. And right now you're thinking, do I have to pay attention to all of those? No, just like I was saying there. 
It's just on some places. Now, this is what's called stable tape, okay? They come in strips like this. You'll get some with your templates, but you're gonna always need more. So like the template that I just showed you, today when I pulled it out, this one was hanging about halfway off because it's been on there for almost a year. And so I just decided to give this template a bath. So I took the stable tape off. I cleaned this with a cleaner that you can use on acrylics. And then after, I, well, it was on this side. And then after I did that, I just took it in and washed it in warm soapy water, dried it off because that got the lubricant stuff that I use off of there. And so now it's got new tape on it. So you're gonna want some extra. So I just keep a couple of those strips right in front of me there. Now, one of the things that I think is important is to show you where to put that tape. So let me see if I can find a picture of that. I may not be able to find that right now, but um, you just wanna make sure it's on your template where you're going to be putting your pressure on your, when you go to do your stitching. Can you believe Donnell, that? I can share my screen. I have, um, I have that document here. Okay. That'd I'll be perfect. And you guys may want to get your camera and actually take either a picture or a screenshot of that. There you go. Perfect. So those are, you're not going to get a diagram like that, but you're going to learn where they go when you get your templates. This is actually your whole uh, set of sampler templates. And that's going to show you. And down in the lower edge of the the uh, the document it says that that particular template the spiral template is one that gets it on both sides and i've got that right here um when we show yeah right here so that you can see i've got them on this side and i've got them on this side so that that way once i'm doing one i can flip it this is the only template in the sampler set that is asymmetrical. So it's not, you know, when you flip this one top to bottom, it's not gonna matter. That one it would. Thanks for sharing that document. I don't know, do you guys need it up again? And that document, so if you um, if you end up purchasing the sampler set of six, you're gonna get a link to this where we actually have a promo going now. If you buy the sampler set of six, you get the starter arc for free and you get uh, access to six different classes on the university and one is Donnell's let's get started class and that uh, stable tape um, layout for suggested location is uh, included with that on the associate university yeah and those you're going to get some great information in those classes so let's go ahead and get started here so i'm going to put the needle down the needle up just like i did and I am right at A. Now I failed to mention, and I can show you this right now, A and B look like they just continue on. But when I put this down and put my needle, or not, I'm not gonna put the needle in place yet, but you can see there's a stopping point right there and right there. So we can easily know when we get to that spot. Now I'm lined up back here put that foot or the needle down, the foot's already down, and we're just going to move around, hesitate at the top. Some people say pause. I like to use hesitate because to me that means you're still going, you're just going slow. For right now, I'm just going to cut this thread to get it out of the way. You've already seen me not. And I'm going to turn this. Now I'm gonna tell you, this sounds like what your parents probably told you, no matter what age you are. When I started doing this, we did not have this crosshair grid that marked these lines and I had to go off of those. And so when you would turn, you would kind of see, is that right over there? But you can see back here, it's not. So that was not as accurate as now that we can just line these up. I don't pay any attention to those anymore. And now we're gonna go around this one. Stop at B. Move to the next line. Okay. 
So each of these is going to be exact. You're going to get back to where you wanted to go. And when we do this in a class, it's surprising how many people, we start with this very design, and how many people are like literally shocked at what they can do that they didn't think they would be able to do. And it's just a matter of taking those hints of pushing against the edge, slowing the speed down to medium, turning that foot around, and using all of the different little tips and tricks regarding thread and all that stuff, because there's your design. Now, if I went again, I could go and line up the diagonals and have one in between each of those. And I've got that stitch, so let me get that to show you. That's what it would look like. So you can see quite a bit of difference by adding just another round in between what you've already done. Now, some of you might be that person like me that's like, well, I can do that all at once. I'm going to do this one, then this one, then this one. No, you get a big mess here in the center. Now, I've got my iron over here, and I'm just going to get my little ironing pad so that I can take that off there and show you how easy those marks press out. And I can tell you, if I had a hassle of doing my markings, I'd never do the techniques because I don't want to mess with all of that. Another thing that I do use is the Frixon markers, not the pens, but the markers. And the way you can do that is if you will put two layers of starch on your fabric first. So you can either use the starch or the starch alternatives. And you're just gonna put a layer on and press it, another layer and press it. And that creates a barrier between, I like to use the fine line markers, the Frixon fine line. That puts a barrier between the ink in that marker and the fabric. So when you go to iron it off, the fabric has not been penetrated with the ink. So you won't have that ghosting and all the things they talk about. But you can see there's a lot more that I can do with this. Um, but you can see that there's a lot of options for your templates. I'm going to show you this one real fast because it just makes sense for you to see how many things you can do. So I'm going to take that line right there. And I'm going to start right here. I probably won't even pull my thread up just because it's not going to matter. Stop at the line. Line it up with my mark. And stop at the line. Lined up with my mark. And stop at the line. This is a good one for right now, you guys, because I think this looks like Hershey Kisses, a line of Hershey Kisses. So a lot of different things that you can do with the templates. Don't just look at that and go, well, what in the world can I do with that besides that? There's a whole lot of things. Sometimes I use this outside arc. So for example, let's just show you on this. If I put this right here in that corner, I'm going to line this up. I'm going to use my measuring and I'm just going to come around that arc. I'm going to come across here. Come around that arc. Now the thing that's cool about this is we have what are called stitching line discs. And these stitching line discs will allow me on paper 
to play with this. So let's see if I can real quickly get it. There we go. So this being the design, I'm just going to cut this so you can get an idea how we can work that design and add more to it just by using even another part. You could obviously use another template. But when I was deciding where to put that little mark there, I had drawn a straight line just like I did with the chalk. And then I use what are called stitching line discs. And stitching line discs are eight little discs with different size holes inside, but they're a half inch side to side outside. So they're the same as the bottom of your foot. So I'm gonna use that one right there. The different size ho um, holes in the begin or in the middle is to, depends on what size of a pencil or a pen or a Sharpie or whatever you're using to draw with. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to put it like right here. See the base of that right there. And I'm gonna take this and put it right in that spot and draw from line to line. And I only had to draw one to realize, well, that's not big enough for what I want. So then I moved it up. I did put the ruler sticker right there in case that was what I wanted. And then I put this here, tried it over there. And that's how I figured out how I was gonna do my design. So this takes the space of your foot and it will allow you to do your designing. So I'm not gonna draw that eight point, but let's say we didn't use a pen and we just used the foot as our rotation. You can see now I would have drawn my crosshairs. Maybe this is a design that you want to do with that template. So having those stitching line discs all of the educators, when we're drawing and getting ready for a class so that you can see what we're going to do, this is how we set it up. We use our stitching line disc to do all of that preparation. And it's great. They're not expensive at all. And they allow you to not have to stitch everything thing you can actually just draw them up now the next template did you have a question we did someone okay. asked oh, what's the difference between those frixion marker pens and the fritz marker i'm not for pen. sure i'm not familiar with that i just i'm just telling you don't use the ink pens. This is a Frixon ink pen. It has a metal tip and that abrades the fabric. And so it def definitely, the template goes down in, or excuse me, the ink goes down in the fabric. So let's see, we got a lot of fun templates here in a short amount of time. So I'm, I'm gonna extend this line here, again with my chalk. And you'll notice that we don't draw out any designs, we just draw registration lines. And I can use the big one so that you can see it. The little one, I can get more of it. So I'm going to use the little one. And then I'll show you the big one stitched out. So I have lined up my 
this template with that top line on that line. Okay, Th that will allow me from here to here is a quarter of an inch. So when my foot bases itself right down in here, the needle's on the line. So we're going to line it up again. And if I want to stack these, which means I will get that clam shell, I stop at the top of a hill. I simply push this up and I put that top line now on top of the hill. So now you get more than a scallop, you get a clamshell. Now the same will look on the other side and I'll show you. I'm gonna cut this thread and I'm gonna totally turn this around. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm real good with a template like this but I'm not good with the template like this. I would be clear out here and down here. So do what you can do. I'm going to line up that line with the base of that loop. I'm going to line up this line right across from there. And I'm simply gonna put that, I always put my foot down away from my template and then move my template in place. I'm gonna pull up my thread, which, which I didn't do on the first one. And when you're practicing, it doesn't matter. That's why I love to have a cutter on my machine because when I'm practicing this, I don't take time to pull them out and tie and all of that. This is a design called Egg and Dart. I guess I'm past where it was. And it's just done by flipping that around. And you can get that configuration. And you can do the same thing with the other side of the template. So this would be the first one I did. I put a little flourish in there. That's the big side. This would be the second one. So as you can see, you've got a lot of opportunity for one particular template. Now the next one I'm going to show you, because I'm just kind of giving you a sampling here, is the circle. And so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw a straight line this way. You can obviously do eight circles. You can do all of that kind of stuff. But I'm going to show you something that I call my my bubble border. So I'm going to take my oop, almost I did pull it out. I thought I was pulling it in. Uh, 
Well, I should have rethreaded from there down. And I just want to mention real quick, Donnell, I'm going to be doing all our giveaways at the end of the broadcast so we get as much time to see you quilting as possible. Right. So if if you haven't, folks, be sure to add a comment. Just say anything, and that'll enter you. I'm going to do some live prizes, and we're also going to do a prize from registrants. So, so if you didn't register, that's okay. Leave a comment. We'll do that near the end. Thanks. Okay. okay. So I've got that through there. I'm going to come into the line, needle down, needle up, and sometimes I even talk to myself just like I'm doing now. I'm going to come in there and put that needle right in the line. Now you can see I've got registration lines here, here, and here. So I'm going to use these and put them both on the line and I call this my bubble border it's a two inch circle and normally that's where the circle ends but to, in order to continue this without stopping and starting and stopping and tying knots and start, whatever it's a template. I can get right back up there on top of that line without stopping and starting. So I move up. I'm going to go the other way because your eyes like things to balance out. And if I put all of the doubles down on one side, it will be heavy. Now, if you wanted that look, that would be fine. Now, I'm going to stop here and show you how I can do that little eyelash look that I did on that other. Um, scallop template. So I'm going to pull this in until the acrylic touches the previous stitching. When it first touches, just stop. I'm going to pull this up and come about three quarters of the way to that line. I'm going to push it in until it first touches come only about half and I'm going to pull it in till it touches the first time and come about a quarter. So now I have added that little flourish in there by using the edge of this template. And then I can move on. I could decide whether I wanted to do every single one or maybe like every third one that we've done here. Now what I'm going to do now is I want to show you another really good investment and that's what's called the Echo Guides. Now I just keep mine on one of these little silicone pieces that has the magnets and this is an echo guide when you see the number that's the way you're going to put it on the foot now what i used this for the other day is the top i'm going to tell you is a bigger open Opening than the bottom. And if you can't get it to stay on 
from the top, turn it over and try the bottom. If that doesn't work, take a piece of our, that embroidery um, perfection tape, put it across there and just cut with an X-Acto knife and then push that tape back. And that extra bit of tape will hold it on there. I'm going to use the small one, the half inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my foot. And by that was with the um, button. I'm going to get a little extra lift with the lift in the back so that I can go right underneath there and now I'm going to set that foot down push down and lift up so now I got a bigger footprint so I'm going to take my circle and I'm going to go up underneath I, I got to go over it because I can't go around that used to sing a song in Girl Scout sounded about like that. Can't go through it. Got to go over it. Okay. So I'm going to hold that and line it up. Put my foot down. And now I have a smaller circle. So guess you could build a snowman if you wanted to. But the echo guides work on a lot of the templates, not necessarily all of the templates. And if you use them on the outside of your templates, let's say I wanted to make some frames. I'm going to just use this one because it has a rounded corner. Now, I could use it with just the foot, but this is allowing me to have a larger one. So you can see how I just made that simple little frame there. So those are echo guides. And next I want to show you that spiral template. And that's probably about all I'll have time to show you. But that's gotten through most everything. The couple of the others are similar to the ones that we've just shown you. So you would just get a little different shape, but do it in the same way. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to take that crosshair square again. And these do come in a bigger size as well as more points. So in other words, you could have a six point that has six equal divisions or a five point that has five equal divisions. And they come in 12 inch, 12 and a half, excuse me, eight and a half. And then we have our little minis that I absolutely love because when I'm doing a small design, these come in a set together, the five, six and eight when you're doing a small design. And another thing is we have two sizes of what are called ruler racks. And like I take the rulers, this I've been working on my um, uh, Starry Nights and these are the rulers that I needed for a particular design in Starry Nights. So I have them all right there in my ruler rack. And this is the small one and it will hold, I think 10 rulers and the Large one, I think it says 14, but I get more in both of them. So I just kind of cram them in there. 
All right. So what we're going to do here is we are going to use the little hook that's on the spiral template. And I'm going to put it right dead center. And I'm going to make it so that this, see this is straight down. This side is parallel with it. And I've got this marked so I can decide which of these I want to put out there to go first. I'm going to use this one. And those markings are not random. This one is at like, I don't know, two and three fourths, whatever. It's the middle. And when you take a class that I use that in, you'll be told exactly. But I'm going to stitch out to the line. And obviously it's not lined right up with that because that's pointing to the line. I'm going to rotate this around and I'm going to allow a quarter of an inch. Now, in a perfect world, that arrow would point right down that line. but we don't live in a perfect world. So we just want to make it so it comes back to the center. And then I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to line up that. And I'm going to stitch out. To the line. Come back. Make it so it comes to the center. Well, we had a couple of questions while you're making those beautiful petals. Um, does there need to be any adjustments made to the tension when setting up? Honestly, if you've got matching um, weights of thread, you probably won't be making any tension adjustments. I would make sure I have everything else set correctly. Now, if you start using decorative threads, which we certainly, as you get better, you want to do that then you're probably going to be making some adjustments that way. Now, I'm not going to do all of this as it goes all the way around. Let me see my sample. Here we are. This is what it would look like once I got finished with it all the way around. I want to show you how to make it look like this, okay? So it's the same thing as we did before. I'm going to line this up, but instead of being able to back this off because of the difference in this, we need to use a tool. And it just so happens that this foot, we want a quarter of an inch away so we need to use a half inch down here because now when this comes up, it will be halfway in between. So down here, we used a half inch and I'm going to come up and I'm going to go back. I'm going to stay the same measurements from there is a half inch. Same measurements from here is a half inch. So you can embellish these on either side. If I wanted to do it on this side, 
I would take this and make the half inch here. Now, I think it's pretty on some to do both sides, but it can be a bit overwhelming if we did both sides on all of these. I just wanted to, you to see how we could do it on both sides. But again, you gotta measure. Now, you can see how you could do it on both sides. We could go the same side all the way around. You could alternate from one to one, whatever you wanted to do. But if you did it to get this one, you would only do one side and that's what you would have there. Now, the other thing I wanna tell you is I only did three, but think about it. That's a triangle. So you could just do three. If you wanted something that was half, you could just do these, that, because that's a triangle also. So there's a lot of ways. And again, that's where your stitching line disc, your pencil and your templates on a paper really help you to get that design that you're looking for. So you can actually draw your space out and then practice in that space. So I'm just going to show you one more here. Um, I'm going to do it on this side so that you can see, but we won't do the whole thing. This is the Spinifex 4. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up. I'm going to do this one. It won't look so good with the other one. I'm going to turn it around. I kind of like to do the opposites. And then I'm going over and do this one. So you can see you've kind of got a little pinwheel if you had this one in there. But then we can also go and do this right here. Now, is the bloom template included in that kit now, Sarah? Let's double check. So the Bloom template, that's in a reseller exclusive, and you can purchase it from your local So Steady and Westerly okay. reseller. You can't find okay. it on our So Steady website. Please go support your local quilt shop and ask for the reseller exclusive ruler work kit. And then, yes, the Bloom is included. I just wanted to quickly show you then, this is the Bloom template. It's a super simple template to do, but you can get such pretty designs and you're up to this. The templates don't just get harder. That doesn't make any sense. They get a little bit more involved. So it's still stitching with a needle that's going up and down and you're moving a template no matter which one that you do. So last but not least, because this is not part of the set, but it's one that's kind of like I guess the best way to say it, it is a uh, bucket list template. And then you're going to learn something in every class because guess what? I learned something in every project. Thank you again so much for being part of our class today. We appreciate you joining us for this education. Make sure to see if there's an opportunity to take advantage of um, one of our other classes in the coming week or weekend. There'll be additional links you can check out on Facebook or our events page um, to sign up. So have a wonderful week and we'll look forward to being able to have you join.